So how do you create branching scenarios without letting them spiral out of control? If you're an instructional designer, educator, marketing specialist, or digital storyteller, knowing how to use branching scenarios can transform the way you connect with your audience. A branching scenario is kind of like a choose your own adventure game where player decisions lead to different paths and endings. But the problem is that branching can easily get out of control. It can even turn into a black hole that blows your project timeline and budget out of the water. In today's video, I'll share five tips for managing the creation of branching scenarios. Along the way, I'll explain bottlenecks and other time-saving tricks. I'll even take you behind the scenes of my interactive video on action mapping and show you how I built 12 alternate endings using a surprisingly simple branching format. And be sure to watch through to the end when I'll share a bonus tip that will really make your branching scenarios stand out. Hi there, it's Kimberly Go bringing you tips and tools to take interactive video to the next level. Let's dive right in. Tip number one, beware of exponential branching. Traditional branching can get very complicated very fast. Take a look at this example where you give the player three choices at each decision. Even if they only go through three decisions, you'll need to build out 27 alternate endings. In the past, this kind of structure was called time cave branching. It grows exponentially and can quickly get out of control. It can also be very difficult to maintain. If your subject matter expert requests even a few changes, that can cause a ripple effect that impacts many decisions and endings. If you create an e-learning module or interactive video with exponential branching, you'll have to build out a lot of paths and endings. And people can get pretty impatient. Most of them won't play through multiple times just to experience all 27 endings, so it could be wasting a lot of time for you to build them for very little reward. Tip number two, try using bottlenecks. A bottleneck is an event that happens no matter what choices the player made before. This type of structure makes branching much more manageable. For instance, you might have the story take place over several days. Let's say that the player has to make three decisions on day one. Then, when that day is over, no matter what they chose before, they always come to a scene called day two, in which they make three more decisions. In this example, using a bottleneck reduced the number of alternate endings from 27 to 9. Bottlenecks work best if you use variables or some other way of keeping track of the key decisions that the player makes each day. I'll talk more about how to use variables later in this video. Using bottlenecks in your scenario is a great way to provide flexibility while still keeping the branching under control. It's a great technique to use if your scenario includes complex conversations like sales negotiations or if the player needs to make a lot of nuanced judgment calls. Tip number three, follow an optimized branching format. There are so many possible branching structures to choose from that it can become overwhelming. So instead of reinventing the wheel each time, you might want to consider using an optimized branching format. An optimized branching format is a branching structure that achieves three things. Number one, it solves a real business problem for the organization. Number two, it gives the user or player just the right amount of perceived branching. And number three, it's relatively easy to build, test, and maintain. Since every organization has different business needs, there's obviously going to be a wide variety of optimized branching formats. But here's an example of one format that you can use. I created an action mapping interactive video based on a healthcare example from Kathy Moore's book, Map It. In this case, the business need was to teach instructional designers basic action mapping techniques. So let's play through the first scene so you can get a feel for the perceived branching from a player's perspective. After that, I'll take you behind the scenes so I can show you how I constructed this interactive video in Articulate Storyline 360. Michelle is an instructional designer who works for a large hospital. There are plenty of requests for course development, but she's frustrated by the low levels of audience engagement. As she's searching for better solutions, she comes across Action Mapping by Kathy Moore, a streamlined approach to business training. Michelle watches a few videos about it and reads Kathy Moore's book, Map It. Just then, she receives an email from Dr. Roberts with the 200-slide PowerPoint deck attached. He wants the deck converted into an e-learning course as soon as possible. Michelle knows this might turn out to be another low-engagement course that doesn't change behavior on the job. So she takes a deep breath and decides to try the action mapping approach. Michelle responds to his email by arranging a project kickoff meeting with herself, Dr. Roberts, and Stephanie, the head nurse. We need a training course on sharp safety. 
Too many nurses are injuring themselves because they're making mistakes when handling needles. I sent you the PowerPoint deck we used in our live training sessions. How long would it take to turn this into an online course? A needs analysis will help us determine project scope. Is there a specific deadline you're trying to hit? Dr. Roberts wants the course to be ready in two months, so Michelle starts asking needs analysis questions right away. Then she converts the PowerPoint deck into an engaging e-learning course which is distributed to all nurses. Course completion rates are high, but nurses continue injuring themselves with sharps. Six months later, Michelle is let go when the hospital cuts the L&D department's budget. Thanks for the deck. It sounds like you want the number of errors to go down. Do you have a target goal in mind? Hmm. It'd be great if we could beat the hospital with the best record when the annual safety report comes out a year from now. To get that, we'd need to decrease our number of errors by 8%. Maybe that could be the goal for this project. Errors with sharps will decrease by 8% within a year as all the staff correctly handle sharps. What do you think? Sure, that sounds good. In that playthrough, you saw what happened when you made both a bad and a good choice. Now, let's go behind the scenes to see how I set up the slides in Storyline 360. First, you watch an animated video segment where the doctor explains the problem. Then you come to a choice screen with three options. If you make a poor choice, you go down one of these two paths. First, you see a video showing the immediate results of your choice. After a black transition screen and some sad music, you see that Michelle loses her job several months later. From the player's perspective, they've reached a poor ending, but they can easily make the decision again by clicking the button that says, help Michelle keep her job. That takes them right back to this choice screen so they can quickly experiment and learn from their mistakes. When a player chooses the right answer, Michelle smiles, and then you see a good result video. After that, you're rewarded with a bonus tip and the story continues into the next scene. This interactive video has 12 alternate endings and one best ending, so the player perceives it has a lot of branching. But as you can see from the storyline slides, it's relatively simple branching structure that's easy to build and maintain. To get a better understanding of how this works in real life, visit theinteractivestory.com backslash action mapping and try out the interactive video for yourself. As you make the decisions, ask yourself if there's enough perceived branching to keep your interest high. I'll include a link in the description below. As I mentioned before, there are many possible branching formats. This is just one example. You're welcome to follow this format when creating your own branching scenarios if it meets your business needs. We've got a few more tips coming up, but if you're getting value from this video, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the like button. That way YouTube will share this video with even more people. Tip number four is to use variables to keep track of previous decisions. Let's take a closer look at that day one, day two bottleneck example and frame it up in a story narrative. Ashley is a new employee at the Acme Call Center and this is her first day on the job. On day one, she handles three calls where she has to decide if she should escalate an issue to her boss. Then on day two, she'll need to make three decisions related to the company's return policy. The full story might go on for an entire week where each day's decisions become increasingly difficult. If you're using a robust e-learning authoring tool like Articulate Storyline or Adobe Captivate, you can use variables to keep track of decisions that the player makes each day. For example, you might create a variable called Day 1 Score that starts at zero and every time the player answers correctly, you add one to the score. There are several ways you could use this information. For instance, if their day one score is too low, you might have them go back and repeat day one activities with different questions. Or maybe at the end of the story, you show them a poor, mediocre, or best ending based on their cumulative score across all five days. By using variables, you can keep the branching structure relatively simple, but still give the player a very high level of perceived branching. Tip number five, consider using a mastery loop. Branching and bottlenecks can be pretty complicated. 
So if you're new to branching scenarios, or if the business problem is relatively simple, it might make sense to use a mastery loop. In a mastery loop, every time you make a poor decision, you see the poor consequence play out, and then you automatically get to make that decision again. Once you make the right decision, the story continues. There's really only one way to get to the ending, and it's always the best ending. Some people discourage the use of mastery loops because they feel it's overly controlling to force people to eventually choose the right path. But if your business problem is relatively simple and doesn't require a lot of nuanced decisions, a mastery loop might be the best format to use. The benefits of using a mastery loop is that it's a very simple structure that's easy to build and maintain. Some organizations even prefer this structure because it allows users to make mistakes but also guarantees they'll eventually make the right choice. This format also works well when you're teaching a brand new procedure to a target audience because it provides scaffolding for their learning experience. Here's a bonus tip. No matter what branching structure you use, you've got to craft decision screens that are both challenging and meaningful. And you have to provide feedback that fits into the overall story narrative. If you haven't mastered that skill, all of your branching scenarios will fall flat. In fact, this is such an important topic that I've created a separate video all about crafting powerful decisions. Click the screen right now to watch that next.